Hello to everyone out there at FanTuber.com. I'm Michael Collins, and we have such a special treat for you today. If you're a listener to Country Radio here in Boston, I'm sure this is going to be a very familiar voice to you. The wonderful Ms. Carolyn Cruz is joining us today at the Country 102.5 studios. Carolyn, thanks for being here oh, so much. Thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's so great to meet you. Now, how long have you been in Country Radio? Um, I've been here 15 years, and I was at the Providence Country Station for a year before that. So 16 years total. So you've been, you're no stranger to the game of country music then. Not at all, no. I bet you've seen a lot of music fans and a lot of country artists kind of come and go. Why do you think Reba's been kind of consistent at the top of the charts for the last 20 years? Well, she's always out there, for one thing. She's always making music, um, doing Broadway, TV, movies. She's constantly put herself out there in the public. And obviously people have a real connection with Reba. She bonds with people. Her shows are amazing. And they always have been. She's one of the first acts I ever saw live. And once you see Reba, I mean, that's just, it kind of ruins it for everybody else, all the other artists <laughs> that you see, because they don't put on quite the spectacular show that Reba does. Oh, absolutely. I haven't, I wasn't able to see the big production numbers, but I was able to see her this last past summer, actually, at the Mohegan Sun. And even in the stripped down setting of just her, she has such a way of commanding the stage. She does. It's just. I thought it was like beyond beyond. I couldn't help myself from standing up and like just cheering outwardly because she is just such a wonderful artist. And she connects with people. And she really does. does. And she works every inch of the stage. She does. She lets every fan know, I love you and you matter and thanks for showing me the support. And that's why people keep coming back. I know. <laughs> and in your mind, you know, she has a brand new single every other weekend out right now. What makes the number one single for you? I think a number one song is one people can relate to. It's a good song is a good song. It doesn't matter who's singing it or what format it is, it's a good song. And then the person singing it is the translator of the song and they have to be able to reach out and connect with the listener. So those, all those factors make a good song and make a number one hit. Have you heard the song every other weekend? Yes. Do you think it's... How do you feel about the song? Well, the lyrics are very powerful, oh, yeah. and uh, it's one of those songs that you hear and you're just like, oh, <laughs> you know, good or bad. It, it, it's, I mean, it's a sad song because these people will never con reconnect. Yeah. Um, but it definitely is something a lot of people can relate to because you know, divorce rate over 50 percent now. Obviously, um, there's a lot of people connecting to that, and we just actually added the song recently. And that is wonderful news. Yeah. yeah. Go Reba. I know, Go Reba. <laughs> I, you know, the first time I heard the song, I downloaded the whole album off of iTunes on September 18th, and I actually woke up super early to listen to the whole thing through, and I just sat there in my room kind of like... Yeah. Powerful. It just blows you away. The arrangement, the lyrics, she just rips your heart out and leaves just shivers going down your spine. The new song has just been added, but how is Reba doing? Is she still a heavily requested artist at this station? Oh yeah, today got a request for Because of You uh, with Reba and Kelly Clarkson. We still get lots of requests for that. I think the most requested Reba song we still have, and it probably always has been since the day we went on the air, is Fancy. Um, we never stop the request for Fancy. No. Yeah. Fancy is obviously her signature song and, you know, over the Bobby Gentry version, she really, she really owns that song as well. She adds such a pizzazz and a fire into it. Now that's a song that maybe not a lot of people can relate to, hopefully. No. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's a story song. It's a great story song, which is another aspect of a number number one hit. Um, if it can tell a great story, that it's like reading a book and you can't put it down. Uh, same thing with a good song. That's a story song. So. Exactly, and that song obviously has a very powerful story in it. Yes. Um, you know, requests, requests, requests. All our fans are always saying, you know, how do I call it my country station? How do I request this new Reba song? How do I show them that, you know, everyone still wants to hear about Reba? You know, what are your, some of your tips for requesting songs? Um, early and often. <laughs> at, at lunchtime we do all requests, but we actually start taking requests uh, probably around 10.30 and people start calling and, and getting the request. And the earlier the better, because the more time I have to prepare to find the songs and play them back with the phone calls. And uh, we do take some e-quests, um, but it, the, 
the whole the show is a success because of the phone calls and people and their voices and saying what they're doing and why they want this song and who it's for and that's the best part of the country cafes is the people calling in so that's why I rely heavily on the phone calls I know and I have to agree the phone call is really the way to go because especially today on the country cafe a woman called in and said I'd love to hear the Rodney Atkins song if you're going through hell yes. and she's like I've been going through a hard time having a bad day gotta hear it yeah. exactly and you know just hearing their voice mm -hmm. it just adds something where as I could see an email kind of seems it can be a little impersonal and definitely kind of get lost we like to talk to the peeps yeah, yeah. and you <laughs> said that you know you get everything ready around starting around 10 30 getting the request together you know, open up the kitchen, yeah. warm up the pots. <laughs> Get the food cooking. That's right. <laughs> um, during the other times of day, what kind of control do you have over what songs are played? Um, none. <laughs> <laughs> because we have an entire hour just dedicated to requests at noon. So the other times of day are um, formatted, as is most radio, um, based a lot on research and requests and focus groups and all. There's many, many factors that go into what song plays where, mood. Um, you can't have uh, a couple of death songs next to each other. Yeah, and that makes sense. Yeah, you know, because you're going to be putting people over the edge. And uh, so we change up the mood and the tempo, and, there, and there's a lot that goes into it, a lot of thought. Now, you said research. Is there any one person that has, like, the final decision on what song gets played when? It comes down to two people, the program director and the assistant program director slash music director, pretty much. But it is based not only on the national charts, but also on local um, record sales, CD sales, and um, also sometimes a gut feeling. Things that work in Boston might not work in Alabama and vice versa, um, because they're con two completely different markets. We have different audiences. This is a hugely collegiate populated um, yeah. city and then you know we have a lot of suburbs that vary tremendously so uh, it's different in every single market and we are a large market too yeah. a major market one of the top 10 so that factors into it as well now you said about 10:30 you start scheduling the lunch cafe and the start taking cafe. requests yes what walk us through the rest of like your daily schedule well, I come in um, an hour, roughly an hour before my show begins at 10 um, to do show prep, you know, go through websites and newspapers and see what's going on in country music and beyond. Like today was a big day, opening day for the Red yeah. Sox. Um, and, or whatever's on the night before, sometimes we talk about American Idol, Dancing oh, yeah. with the Stars, the popular shows. So I try and compile a list of things I want to touch on briefly. So you talked about okay. American Idol. Yes. Yeah. Are you a fan? Huge. <laughs> if Reba were to be a mentor on American Idol, what tips do you think she'd give to the audience? Oh, she'd be fabulous. A as a performer, especially, um, because she knows how to command a stage and she doesn't just stand and sing, which can be powerful too, but she can certainly give tips on performing and moving and feeling the music, and not only that, but projection, especially because she's been on Broadway. It's such a oh huge yeah. thing. If people sing too softly, you can't hear them, but you don't want them screaming. I think she'd be great at those two things. I know she really knows how to stretch the voice she because does. especially on we've heard like recordings from Annie Get Your Gun and anyone who is lucky enough to actually go see it. Oh you did? How was it? Awesome. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. It seemed like it must have been a wonderful time. It was worth the trip. Worth the tickets, the trip, everything. I would highly recommend if you ever get to see Reba on Broadway. I know, I hope she does another stint in any Broadway show because I'll be the first in line <laughs> to go see it, for sure. But she knows how to stretch the voice because whether she's doing a really sad song or an up-tempo number, she really hits it home. It doesn't really matter what kind of song it is, and she just does a wonderful job. And do you have anything else you'd like to say to our listeners before Carolyn takes us on a very exclusive tour Ooh. of the Country 102.5 studios? Yes. Um... Well, Reba, we've always been big fans of Reba. She actually did commercials for us early and when we first started in Boston. She was our um, on our billboards, and she's been a big part of this radio station for a long time. And uh, i got to say that she is definitely one of the nicest artists I've ever met. She ranks up there with Garth Brooks. That She actually doesn't just shake your hand, have your picture taken, and go. 
uh, which is what most of them do, because frankly, there's so many fans meeting yeah. them that they don't have a lot of time. But she'll actually have a conversation. Say, how are you? And uh, you know what I did today? I went on Newberry Street and bought some shoes. And she would say things like this. You know, just personalizing everything that she. That's why she gives so much of herself, and people love her. And we're included in it. I know it seems like the consensus since I've been doing this webcast. We've talked a lot about, especially the TV show, and you know the character she portrayed there, and a lot of people have to say that maybe that isn't a character at all. It seems to be genuinely who she is. She is, and she's appreciative of all she has in her life, and that's always good to see. It is a good quality to see. And you know what? I want all of you to stay tuned because we'll be right back with an exclusive tour of the Country 102.5 Studios. <laughs> 